Hello and welcome back to compiler programming. In the last video we did a bunch of cleanup and also added support for the for referencing data on a stack in our encoder and which also forced us to talk briefly about uh, zipbyte. What I want to do today is to try to move our code a bit more high level. Um, if you look at this, we are basically just straight up uh, writing assembly. And that means that, uh, like in particular, I will focus on this uh, make increment function. Because if you look at it, we have these a lot of these magical constants in it. Like for some reason, we are uh, subtracting 24 from RSP, then we are using stack at position zero, but um, it's completely sort of unclear why we are doing that. Like, what is the reason? So we're going to talk a bit about uh, stack alignment and uh, about like how we can kind of create variables on the stack with a bit more high level code. So let's just take this procedure and try to do something better. Um, if you read about uh, x64 calling convention and ABI, you will see a difference between leaf functions and non-leaf functions. So if I bring up the same page as we looked at a while ago, x64 calling convention, So there is this thing about leaf functions and uh, leaf functions have a bunch of um, kind of simplifications. They don't require as much, but uh, for now, since it will be hard for us to distinguish between a leaf function and a leaf function, we will just consider everything to be non-leaf and make everything robust and consider this uh, leaf function as optimizations because we believe there is no like requirement for uh, functions to be leaf ones. It's just a just a literal optimization because it has to do with um, stack alignment and uh, a few other things. So let's talk about stack alignment. Uh, here's an interesting part that is uh, that is relevant to us for now. The stack pointer must be aligned to 16 bytes in any region of code that isn't part of epilogue or prologue. We will get back to those two when we will be implementing function calling, but for now uh, we can probably skip this. Uh, what is important is these 16 bytes. Mm. And this will also explain uh, these weird 24. Okay. So we say we need 16 byte alignment, right? Uh, we assume that whoever called us follows the same conventions. So they, their stack was also aligned to those values. Uh, maybe it's, it's worth uh, saying, what does it actually mean that uh, the stack is 16 byte alignment? If you look at the memory address, we'll have like a bunch of bunch of bytes here, right? So 64 bit address is something like this, right? And let's say that our stack leaves uh, here. So like, this is our stack. And uh, which is, usually it's way less, so, but doesn't matter. Uh, the point is if we put some kind of address here this is not necessarily a valid stack location. So the uh, this calling convention says that it needs to be 16 byte alignment aligned, and that means that this last um, byte of the address of anything on the stack needs to be zero. Because uh, I wrote here in hexadecimal encoding, so one. Uh, Uh, one digit here refers to 
16 values. Uh, so this is 16 byte aligned. Um, getting back to our calculations. If, as I said, the color, for example, is uh, has a stack on this address. When the color does the call instruction, like let me actually show it to you. So do we have a poll here? Yeah, so for example, when color does uh, this instruction to jump to our function, the call instruction does two things at the same time. It uh, pushes the return address to, to the stack, and then it does jump to some address that we specified to our function, our function address. Okay. Um, this push is uh, eight bytes because uh, I believe it it pushes like uh, instruction pointer after the call instruction. So like if you look here, what it will do, it will push this address to to the stack. Um, and since this address is also 8 byte, that means that right after this jump, our stack is actually misaligned. So if we try to access uh, something on the stack, it will have this address. And this is not correct according to, to our ABI. Um, if, like, more so if we, so like, if we just wanted to put a variable there. Uh, since our variables are eight bytes, but the stack again needs to be 16 bytes alignment, aligned. So like to align it, we would just do sub RSP uh, eight. And now everything is fine. So it will be 2350. But now, uh, so this just aligns it for us, but now we need to um, put our variable on the stack. And we also want the stack to be aligned afterwards. So even though we, the variable here is just uh, 32 bits, uh, we still want the stack to be at the right position after we do that. So, that means that we need to do another RSP16. Maybe with uh, with optimizations enabled, we can get rid of it. So I'm like I'm not exactly sure if we can uh, kind of skip these two altogether and just write to this address. But uh, for now, we'll just implement kind of the the safe option and see how it goes. So I also open this compiler explorer here. And I will try to compile it with optimizations enabled and see what it will do. Uh, this is such a OX. Yeah, so it will probably. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it will just calculate that this is four and inline it. Um, can I kind of force it somehow to ignore this function and do call it? Is it like no in line or something like this? Um, MSPC no in line. Tickle spec no in line. Let's try that. Okay. Ah, okay. So, but it's still it kind of it still uh, changed the the call to direct jump, and then just piped the output. So instead, we say square two, 
and return zero. Maybe like this, it will do what I want. No, in this case, it just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it will be a bit tricky to force the compiler to do what you want. So let's just ignore it. Uh, this is safe, at least from what I understand. And this is what is what is already happening in our code right now. So this is what we will be emulating with more um, dynamic behavior. Ideally, what I would want to get to is to say something like, uh, I don't know, start function or something. Um, then variable, so kind of like, not sure how to say it. Uh, correctly make a nice DSL for this. So say variable X, then I can do X, uh, hmm. yeah, then I can do uh, assign X one, variable x and here I can say s32 for example assign x1 and what do we need to do more so sign x1 then it adds rcx to rux I can do something like sign or plus arg for now let's just say like this plus uh, rcx x and and end function. Yeah, something like this would be nice. So essentially what I want to get at is that I would like to uh, and get, ah, okay, we still need to do return. And so we need to say, we can't use the return, we can't use red. So let maybe we can use like uppercase or uh, title case for our, so like say function var sign plus return. And what do we return? We return, we return. For now, we just say RCX. Okay. And function. So what could we do to make such a DSL? First, we need some kind of type dev uh, struct function. Yeah, so it means we can't use it this for a function, but uh, maybe we can just uh, actually use struct directly somehow. I'm not sure. Um, let's say start function. Okay. Uh, these structs will need to have a few things. So it needs to know how many arguments are available and um, yeah it needs to know how many arguments are there so that we can reference them later but we can skip that for now so we can say to do args 
but more precisely right now it needs to be aware of how many variables are in the in that function and here if you have written uh, pascal um, at any point you know that it declares all the variables at the very top of the function um, i'm not actually sure if it's historically so but uh, having it that way actually is what we will go for right now as well because it allows us to to know ahead of time sort of how much space we will need for for those variables but um, yeah Let, let's see so we need to know so we use 64 Or we all need that big. We have to do stack stack size. Now, okay, that's fine for now. And let's think about what start function will do. Or maybe right now we will do it without macros and just uh, have those later. So function function is this um, stack net, let's not call it size let's take stack reserve and actually stack reserve uh, as we described here needs to be eight to begin with stack reserve is Eight. Next, we need to create a variable. So let's uh, make a function that is called. So we also need to have a concept of a variable. And right now, we actually probably can directly use the concept of the uh, operand, I guess. Um, let me think about it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we can. So, create or operand declare variable, and the declare variable will accept function. And what will it do? I guess it needs to... We also need to have here the type of the variable. So I don't remember um, what is our... What have we defined? already so we have operand type immediate uh, 8 and immediate 32 and then we have run type yeah we have memory indirect but we don't really have a concept of a size on the memory so we will have to add this at some point but maybe for now okay for now let's just consider that all the variables are 64 bit as we did before so even though here it says s32 that will be a lie for now i will not implement that it will be just var s and then 64 i guess okay that needs to return uh, whatever this thing was returning stack uh, stack 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 of stack reserve hmm okay let's do it for now but this will actually not work for more than one variable but it will work for one so it is fine plus 16 
good. Let's actually use hex. So it's a bit more straightforward. Okay. No, it should be function. Function stack reserve is um, yeah like this. So we tell it in our function definition. We say that we actually reserve more stack space, and then we so here is what I'm thinking about. Like when the stack when we um, declare something on stack, stack grows downwards. And we will do this command of sub RSP at the very beginning. So the offsets that we are specifying here are actually offsets from the kind of from this bottom, not from the top when they were declared. So we will need to for all the variables, we will need to kind of switch this around and somehow um, somehow uh, reverse this uh, stack offset. But for one variable, I guess this is fine. So this is will be our stack zero. Okay. So now we say operand x is declare variable of uh, function. And let's actually see if that builds. That does not build. Uh, what is wrong here? Ah, yeah. It's, that's not how you write C. This is how you write C. Okay, it complains that X is not used. This is fine. Okay, at least that builds. Let's continue. So now we say assign X one. So we'll need some kind of function. And uh, I believe we won't be able to make it really as nice. We will still have to wrap this into um, an immediate. So it will be uh, something like this immediate 32 one. Assign, assign of x immediate 32 of 1. Good. What will assign do? Well, assign uh, needs to sort of um, put this instruction somewhere. And this is where w the fun begins because um, we kind of need to reserve space for for this instruction in our buffer, and because at the point where we um, because at the start of the function, like when we call this, we don't know how many variables will be there, so we don't know how much we will need to put into this uh, sub. Uh, we only know this at the end of the function. At the same time, uh, we do want to start putting our instructions in there. And uh, those instructions need to go to the right position. We could do it in a couple of ways. Uh, one, we could uh, reserve space for this instruction or we can shuffle things around. I think I will opt to um, reserve the space and then um, and kind of overwrite it with uh, or 
let me think what what would be the the easier option i guess i guess let's let's ignore it for now and then we'll see later okay so assign needs to do this and we still need to pass our function and i believe our function will need to have um we'll need to have a buffer so buffer buffer okay and now we need to start uh, changing things around so instead of just random buffer we will assign it to our function so it will be like this Uh, declare variable function what parent parent declare already has a body ah okay I just copy pasted the thing but didn't actually um, and this is fine so now we need to implement this assign what will assign take assign is pretty straightforward it need it will take two operands and i think we'll have we'll pass both of them by uh, pointer so we'll need to save our immediate operand as well parent uh, b or y is temp that's what they'll call it temp uh, parent temp is immediate one in the sign it gets the function it gets uh, operand star a and then operand star b and it doesn't return anything instead it simply does uh, this i guess we can actually pass this by eh, doesn't matter So star A, star B. Function buffer, instruction. Yep, that sounds correct. Syntax error, syntax error. Um, buffer is like this. Okay, that's fine. So we are till here now we need plus so again that's fine we do plus for there for that we don't need to oh no, we need to pass the function and then the same thing we need to pass to to argument so rcx and x i guess for consistency Let's just always pass by value. Okay, assign plus, what will plus do? Super straightforward. Plus does this. We say A, B. and in uh, later we would want to, to make it more like you would do in high level language so like you should be able to assign the result of the plus here so i guess would be nice if plus actually returns an operand and that operand is um, a but also 
uh, we will want to uh, create a temp value for result. So the the problem here is that this plus does not behave like you would expect uh, from a, a regular language like even C. Like if you do something like A plus B, you don't expect A to be uh, modified, right? You expect uh, A to stay the same, and then the result of this operation will be uh, kind of will uh, be returned to you. But uh, in order for us to do that, this will require uh, having this concept of temporary values. And uh, this is quite tricky because then you also have to uh, keep track of them and know, um, so either put them in registers and then uh, have register replication or always put them on a stack, but then your stack becomes really big. So we'll figure it out eventually, but for now we'll have this uh, weird uh, version of plus that uh, kind of modifies the uh, the first operand. So maybe we should call it something like mutating plus. So it's more obvious what it does. Uh, this is not, it doesn't actually return what you think it is. Okay, we do this. Now we need to have a return. Um, I think Turn. So let's first check this piece. Okay, return. What will return do? We have this end function and return. So maybe we don't actually need both of them. Maybe we can make uh, return do like kind of finalize for us. Um, what the function actually needs to do. Okay, so what will it do? Uh, make return or function return. It's called function return. It should not return anything really, but it needs to, of course, do this. The actual instruction but this will not be all that it needs to do. We will need to do some, some stuff. In particular, uh, it also needs to do this. So it needs to restore the stack and here we need to know what to put into this value and this is where our uh, stack reserve variable comes in, right? So we just uh, kind of add how much we we reserve. I guess we could also do the same thing in... So let's create this start function function begin, I don't know what what is the right name for this. And function begin will return to us this function. So it will return kind of pre-initialized function and push this instruction. But you note here I put this weird value, like I believe CC usually means initialized memory. And what we will need to do is once we get to the return of the function, we need to override this memory with something else. So this, let's say, um, override stack reservation. 
And the way we do that is with a bit of um, funky uh, action with the buffer. So we save the current buffer offset by saying U6, uh, U64 saved occupied is function buffer occupied. Then we say, we pretend that occupied is zero. Then we say function uh, buffer occupied is zero. Then we re-encode the same sub instruction. Sorry, it needs to be like this. It needs to be sub function sub. And here is this. Now we re-encode the same instruction as we did here. So they will take the same space because they are exactly the same. And we can say uh, volatile reserve stack. This type of comment is something that I saw um, on Jonathan Blow's streams, and I think it's it's very handy because basically what it tells you is like if you change this, you also uh, need to change something else, and there is no like logical connection or no code connection between them, but there is a logical connection, and this is how you look up what what do you actually need to change if you change one of them. So now I know like if I don't see the other code, I'm, I will like oh okay. So I just search for this uh, reserve stack and I know that, oh, this is the other location that I need to, to change. So this is quite handy in situations where we can't directly establish link with the code. Okay, anyway, here we need to put our function stack reserve and we need to restore the uh, occupied bytes to what they were so we can continue writing our actual code of the function. Okay. And I also sometimes like to separate code into these kind of logical blocks uh, that are then easier to, to distinguish that this part is completely self-isolated and has nothing to do with what we were doing below. Cool. So we say function, function is function begin. We don't really need any parameters to this. Not that I think of. I mean, eventually we'll probably need to figure out what to do with a buffer, but maybe not even that. Okay. Function begin. Good. Declare variable. Upper run temp. Since we are now passing by value, we don't need temp. We can just do this directly. And now we can say uh, function return of function. Good. Return does not take any reference. Let's see how we are doing. Lots of errors. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Uh, function buffer. Yeah, it's like this and like this. Like this. Okay, that's fine. Over here you also need to say that it's a function buffer. That's good. Oh. Um. Use dot. Turn function. Mm. 
function buffer. What's wrong? Ah, no conversion from U32 to immediate eight. Well, let's just say that this is U8 for now. And then another to do. Uh, make it S32, I guess, or U32, doesn't matter. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you can ignore this file delete things and working on this editor and sometimes it does uh, strange things. Uh, let's Let's check if this is, if it does work. Probably will explode spectacularly. So I actually want to look a bit at the, uh, what the assembly actually looks like. For that, we will unfortunately need to use Visual Studio. Oh, let's just write and test. Sorry. Just sort of build, build, fine. Dev environment, build slash mass. Okay. Uh, we want to open our file here. Great. And the one that we are interested in is this make increment how do i can i like add the breakpoint breakpoint sorry breakpoint okay i need to click here i don't use visual studio so let's see start great we are fine uh, Okay, so we have our ink s64 function. Can I go to this assembly? Um, okay. So F10, now we're going to the actual function. Okay, sub RSP 18H, that seems good. This is what we wanted. Now we have move one. Can I see somehow the registers, tools, it's not what I want. Window, help, no, view. Um, solution error, find results, other windows. I'm not sure I can, uh, can I do like this. Okay. I can just, I guess I can just put the register names into it and it knows that they're registers. So RCX 10, 10. Oh, one thing that we forgot to do is we forgot to actually like return the value that we wanted to return. So, wait. Um, let me reopen the editor. So here, when we do function return, we do encode the return, but uh, our, we still need to tell it what to return, right? So we need to say return RCX. And if we do return RCX, we need to add 
operand uh, to return here and we need to move it to the right position so we need to say we need to move it to racks um, obviously like all of these only works with things that fit into 64 bits uh, and there is a lot a lot of work to to make it work with other stuff but for now it's perfectly fine and we just need to make some progress to return let's build ah we can build because this thing is um yes uh, we'll save it here incompatible types from in star to buffer star it's fine uh, built yeah uh, let's restart our dev environment and start our stuff so we say f10 then f11 now i can't do f11 but maybe it did work and result is 43 great so we did succeed in our job we can now remove all of this stuff and I'm not sure if I want to have this uh, kind of uh, macros for for DSL around this. I might play around with it off stream and see like what would be nice to to work with. Uh, but for now, this is this is what we have. So, uh, arguably, uh, this is slightly easier to read and slightly more understandable than. Uh, what we had before because at least we have these uh, variable declarations here and let's add this to index the the interesting question is of course um, around what if we declare two variables can this uh, work and in particular we can try to make this function more complicated Let's say we have this operand x now we have operand y uh, we assign y to be 2 and then we add both x and y to our cx so what we would expect to happen now is obviously it's no longer increment but let's just go with it uh, it should be 45 instead of 42 so maybe let's call it oh, whatever let's call it add three so that's still built but if i try to test it it will be not what we expect to happen and I can show you why yeah it says result is not 45 the problem is what I mentioned when we started to work on this thing uh, it is in these declare variable so the last variable that we declare is uh, is going to be in the right position but uh, as we declare uh, but previous uh, variables will now have a, an offset and we would like to um, 
to know how to track this. Um, one option would be to assign these offsets, so like have a second variable on the function that just tracks them sort of in in reverse direction. I mean, in reality, it doesn't really matter if we assign it forward or we assign it backward, like if the first variable is first in the stack or first variable is last in the stack. So I guess, I guess, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. So we can probably start with zero here, uh, use function stack reserve here and say, operand result <laughs> result then we increase the stack we return result and we also want to add this alignment when we actually do the the reservation here so we say u8 alignment um, is eight so stack reserve plus alignment So the first variable will be at stack zero and the second one will be so they will be sort of as said in, in reverse order but it should be fine if we do it that way let's check it out something did not go well at all and so we can again open up our debugger and see what's going on. Build Okay, much better. Start. Now we want to look at the disassembly of this and go through it. Okay. So we do sub RSP 28H. That seems correct we move oh yeah our stack is misaligned but let's see if the actual calculation is correct so i'm interested in no oh the actual calculation is not correct at all Why is it not? Can I look at like RSP? Uh, no. Can we do star RSP? Hmm. Do something like uh, int of int star this. Okay, this is how I can look at it. Int star RSP.
yeah so the values seem to be written correctly into the right positions um, this also honestly seems fine to me but our rcx is a complete completely wrong Oh no, it, it actually is not. <laughs> it's, it's perfectly fine. Okay, let's fix our alignment and maybe that will actually will be, that will fix the rest. Okay, let me just do it in Visual Studio once I'm here. Um, yeah, we need to also we need to take this alignment, put it up here, and use it. Maybe I can do. U8 stack size is this. Okay. That seems fine. Can I build? It still does not work. I wonder why. Let's check again. So, step into the function. This is it. This is fine. So, 2a is um, 42. We do this, we do this, we do this. Uh, move racks. Racks. Um, what if I say that treat racks as int? Yeah, this, this seems fine. If I remove hex, this is value 45. So what is wrong with it then? Oh, <laughs> here we say that this is yeah, if this is x64, then um, this is what's our problem. Um, how do I deal with it? I guess... So our issue is stack is un un uninitialized. And when we do this... Uh, where are they? Where are they? make it bigger for the stream when we do the the addition or the moves this ones when we do these assignments we assign a 32-bit value but we are also assigning it um like we we don't assign the top bits which means that we get basically garbage in our uh, in in our values, which is not very nice. Um, I thought ah yeah. So this um, I'm just trying to figure out which which instruction actually is messing us up. Let me try to go there again to make sure go here and i'm interested in which register i'm interested in rcx 
So RCX is correct. Um, now we need to step through this. Yeah, so what is it? Uh, is it called long? Long or something? Yeah, long, long seems to be correct. Yeah, so our problem is that um, is what will be there. If we step through these two instructions, then it doesn't overwrite the top part of the register. And this is the, so we end up having garbage in there. And it doesn't overwrite the top part of the register because it ends up using, so it's, it's this instruction move dvort pointer to to there um, I guess what we need to do is change our encoding logic to use regs byte in cases where where we are using indirect memory I mean that's, that's again that's not correct but it should help us right now, I guess. Yes, yes it does. Cool. This was a bit of a slow video, but I still hope you enjoyed it and learned something new with it. So now we have this uh, kind of nicer setup uh, where we can declare variables on the stack, we can assign values to those variables, or at least we can assign immediate values. We'll see if like, uh, we'll increase what we can do here. Uh, and once we introduce temporaries at some point, we've, we also will be able to have expressions where we'll like say, like y is equals to blah, 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 blah. Like, rsx plus x another thing that we will need to do eventually is not hard code RSX, rcx here but instead of allow our function to uh, have arguments and assign them to to variables but that's that's enough for today thank you very much for watching and see you next time